Manifest is still TV3 New Day. You're welcome. It's time for the health segment. Over the past two weeks, we've been discussing breast cancer, which we know, of course, um, at this point, that is the leading cause um, of death amongst women in the country. And so it's important that we touch on it as much as possible so that we can help save a life out there. By the way, have you checked uh, to be sure that there's no lump in your breast? You can do your self-screening. And if you're above age 40, then you need to go to the hospital and get a mammogram done as well and so in the studios today we're focusing on surviving breast cancer and we have two guests who have uh, beaten cancer to it and so today they live to share their testimony and in fact it's actually very important that you learn from them especially if you also have been diagnosed with breast cancer they are here to give you hope and also to give you a direction as to what to do in order to hopefully survive as well and so good morning to Dorothy Amor she's a founder of Dorothy's Hope Breast Cancer Foundation and also CEO of Chic Optique. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello. And then I have Beryl Liz Bannerman. She's an accountant at GRA and also a breast cancer survivor. First of all, um, let me ask you, Beryl, how long have you been living without breast cancer? Um, nine years. Nine years now since you, you survived. That's right. Wow. Dorothy, how about you? Um, it's been several years, way over 15 years. Over 15 yeah. years? Yeah. Okay, how did you find out, Beryl, that you had breast cancer? Mm. Accidentally, my youngest mm. daughter, you know, pressed my breast accidentally. And okay. I didn't feel the pain. Mm. So I just did a little touch and I was sleeping there. So in the morning, I checked, I saw everything was fine. Mm. And I told my mom and she said, we need to get to the hospital. When you say everything was fine, I'm a bit confused. Physically. When, okay. There was nothing wrong with it. But you it. felt pain when your daughter pressed? There was no pain. Okay, so yeah, what alerted you? It felt abnormal. Okay. No, you know, no pain on a breast. It was abnormal because okay. she she put her whole weight on, mm. right? So there was some numbness there that you yeah. couldn't explain. Yeah. So you yeah. went to see a doctor the next yeah. day. Did some few tests and they realized that that was it. So in your case, what stage were you before you realized? Uh, the first one I was in second stage, and the second one was, I think, the third stage. Wait, when you say first and second, so first you're diagnosed in one breast. Yes. Okay, and that was nine years ago. That's right. All right. And then immediately they found out um, what they had to check the second breast as well. No, it wasn't checked at all. So I had to undergo the surgery. Had six cycles of uh, chemotherapy. Six cycles. Yeah. Wow. Second stage and there was surgery already. So that means they had to give you a, a mastectomy That's immediately. Right. That's right. It was an emergency. Wow. So within how many weeks did you have to undergo um, the surgery? I can say within uh, one and a half weeks. And after surgery, you had to go through chemotherapy. That's right. Six rounds of that. That's how right. How long does one chemo session Almost last? a month, depending on how, if you pass your blood test after mm. three weeks, if you pass, you would go for the next one. If you don't pass, you have to build up your hemoglobin. Wow. You can go and go I'll come month. to you to tell me how <laughs> chemo feels like. But Dorothy Amwa also, um, you know, found out that she had breast cancer about 15, 16 years ago. Well, at the or, age of 29. At the age of 29, mm -hmm. that was pretty young. Yeah, it was. It was. How did it happen? Um, once again, you know, without having known much about cancer at that age, mm. I just, um, my husband at the time found a lump in my breast, um, and um, my left breast, and um, one thing led to another. Initially, we thought, okay, it's probably a cyst. Yeah. So, you know, hoping it was a cyst. So, um, I went in and had it taken a look at. Mm. I just went to a doctor and they biopsied it. Okay. And um, I'll define a biopsy for yeah. those who don't. Yeah. Yeah. Biopsy is basically a needle that they insert into the breast okay. tissue and then they remove a little bit of the tissue and they take it to the lab and then, and then they test it. Okay. So um, that's what happened to me and they tested it and then it came back as malignant. Okay. Yes, and um, that's when I was told that I had breast cancer. It's biopsy for everybody who goes to check for breast cancer? Yes, pretty much. Okay, well, so if you have a lump. If you have a lump, yeah. that's when they the, check. The, there are several procedures. You can have an ultrasound done, um, which looks into it further. Mm -hmm. It's almost like an, an x-ray, pretty much. Okay. looks into it further. And then also a biopsy, yes, is recommended. Okay, so immediately they checked and found that you had... At what stage were you, by the way? Um, mine was stage three. Stage three. Mm -hmm. So you had gotten cancerous. Yes, yes, yes. Stage three is pretty advanced. Wow. Yeah. So my lump was, um, yeah, just one lump in the left breast. Just one lump, and it was already stage three? Yes, and obviously at that, and at that age also, it grows really aggressively. So, you know, you have to really sort of 
be diligent about your treatment method. Yeah. Okay, so what yeah. kind of treatment did they give you? Um, I had an option of, well, one of the doctors wanted to perform a lumpectomy, but then I met other doctors. I did a lot of research. Sorry, hold on. When you say lumpectomy, I mean... <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> what does it mean? Okay, lumpectomy is when you go in and you, you surgically remove the lump. Okay. Okay, okay. so you save the breast. Mm. Um, but um, I met another physician who said to me, it was so aggressive and the cancer had spread in the ducts, in my, in my milk ducts. Wow. So um, he advised the mastectomy and reconstruction, which is what I ended up doing. So okay. I had a mastectomy, the removal, and then I had a reconstruction done. So when the removal was done, did you also have to undergo chemo? I did, yes. So and everybody who is diagnosed with breast cancer would? Not necessarily. Okay. Um, with stage three, the chances of your cancer having spread to other parts of the body is quite high. Ah. Okay, so what they do is whilst I was on the table and they did the surgery, they also took out limb lymph nodes from under okay. my armpit okay okay um, because everything goes through the lymphatic system mm -hmm. so um, so they took out the lymph nodes some lymph nodes and they found three positive yeah. okay so the fact that they found three lymph nodes positive meant that the cancer was possibly hiding somewhere else in my body okay so then the only option what, what one has to do then is to perform um, to go through chemotherapy mm. and what chemotherapy is is they inject your body okay. with um, with an intravenous mm. medication mm. so you sit there for hours on end and you go through the process and um, yeah, and, the, and this bombards all the cells in your body. And, all right. Yeah. That's like killing every cell in your body and your body starts all over again. Yes. It's like rebooting your system. It really, honestly, it really weakens your immune system. Okay. That's the hardest part. You feel weak, you know, you, you, infection can set in, which is what um, the lady was saying earlier on that, um, you know, she had to stop after one cycle mm -hmm. and then have her blood tested to see whether it's working, wh you know, whether she's too weak to do another cycle. Okay. That you, means it doesn't work for everybody. Chemo? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay, what would be the reasons why it would work for someone and not work for another person? Is well, there guess, any explanation for that? I think it depends on your immune system. Okay. And then they have different um, various drugs. So um, mine was higher, some has a low, so it depends. Okay. Yeah. So you, like you said, six sessions of chemo, yeah. and then they had to take out the other breast as well. Yes, two years later. Two years later. So yes. after chemo, you were fine. You I came back fine. to normal. Came back but did you fine. lose your hair during chemo yeah, and all everything. of that? Everything. 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 Okay. Yeah. And then what happened and you found out that you still had? Um, I started having pain in the second breast after two years. So I had to go through a series of tests again. And they found out that it was there. But are you telling me that the whole time they found that she had breast cancer in one breast, they never checked the other never. one? Never. Never. That's... Mine was an emergency, so um, I was rushed to the theater. So it's like all the attention was on, on that, that one. They f totally forgot about the other one. Well, that's rather And throughout the tests yeah. and all of that. Yeah. But then if that's the case, chemo is chemo for the whole body or it, it's only for that part of your body where the cancer is? No, it's for the entire body. It's so then systemic, it, it goes through the entire body. So why didn't, then I'm assuming that the chemo should have at least killed no, the think, cells I in she, the other? If I, I think what she's saying is that it, she had one breast removed, Yeah. was treated for that, and then a couple of years later you had a recurrence. In, right. the, in the other breast. Right, right. Yeah. Mm. What, is, what the doctor said was, I think, um, because of the chemo drugs, it, there was a cancer in the other yeah. breast. But because of the drugs, it shrank. Okay. So it so became inactive. Two years. Yes, and then it started. So th did you find that out yourself or you had to I go back? I found myself because it was giving me pain. Pain. So yeah. you went back and they said it was. Right. So as you're okay. here now, the, um, you've undergone a double mastectomy. That's right, bilateral. Wow. How was it like and how did you... How difficult was it accepting that I'm going to live the rest of my life without my breasts? The first one, I cried totally for, I think, uh, five days. I didn't mm -hmm. talk to anyone because I had to come in terms with what was ahead of me. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, I had uh, friends, I had my pastor talking to me and uh, encouraged me. So you literally had family support. That's without right. them, you don't think that you would have um, made it through? Yeah. Yeah, you can do it on your own. Okay. You can do it on your own. Okay. Mm. So after they took out your breast, what, what happened? I mean, how you survived? Because I still see that you have yeah, breasts now. So I'm a little confused. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I was um, giving prosthetics to put in there. Okay. To place in my And car. all this was done in Ghana? Yes, I was in Ghana. Ghana. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Dorothy? You under, uh, underwent reconstructive surgery. Yes. So I'm guessing that didn't happen here? 
No. Okay. No, I was in the U.S. when it ha when I was diagnosed. Mm. So I was at Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. That's where I p had my surgery performed, and I had the option of um, you know having the removal and then um, waiting. Okay. And then having the reconstruction, but I I really wanted to, it to be over and done with. Immediately. So I, I went through 17, more than 17 hours of surgery. 17 yeah, hours? Yeah, because they did, the plastic surgeon came in after the surgeon had removed and then, you know, did the reconstruction. Okay. I had a procedure called a tram flap okay. where they take tissues and muscles from the stomach okay. and they use it to do the reconstruction. So everything is back to normal now? Well, it's never back to normal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah. You're fine. I mean, yeah. 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 But, but what about you? What are some of the psychological, um, you know, I think it really hit me when I was lying on the operating table. Mm -hmm. That's when it really hit me. Okay. And then he came along and drew on my body with all the marks how he was going to cut me up, you know. And that's when it really hit me. And you know, was it difficult getting back to normal after surgery? Yes, it was. It, it was. was. It was. It was. What I mean, made it easy for I, you? My work. You know, I'm a pretty strong-minded person and strong-willed okay. person. So. I think fortunately, you know, my businesses were thriving and I, I just didn't stop. Mm. I remember I was in, I left the hospital about three or four days after the procedure. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. After the procedure. I had the tubes in me, you know, the drainage tubes yeah. and um, I left and I went to check on my work and make sure everything was okay. Wait, what drainage tubes are we talking about? So after the surgery? After most surgeries, they, they implant drainage tubes into your body. Okay. Because, um, your body ejects all sorts of fluids because yeah. mm. you know, you're swollen. Okay. So for about a period of two weeks or so, you, yeah. you have to wear these tubes. And, and that means that you have to be bedridden for that period of time? Most yeah. people, yes. But you yeah. weren't? I hid it under my clothes. Mm. And went to work? Yes. <laughs> then so it was easy for you then? <sighs> I just I just went through it. Okay. You know, I mean, I remember my body was shortened as well because of the procedure. They took they cut me here. Yeah. So I had to learn. For, it took me about two months to stretch again. So I couldn't. You know, I was sort of hunched back for a couple mm. of months. Right. But you know, but you know what? You have your life, so you just yeah. have to try to make the That's most of it. Do you live in fear now, thinking that maybe anything else could happen? I mean, if I've been diagnosed <laughs> with cancer once or twice, then it could come back. For me, um, after two years after the second surgery, my doctor contacted me and asked me to do the hysterium uh, to take out my tubes. Okay. It's because um, he's afraid, you know, that's another section, section that, that it could be. attack. And then I'd finish having my babies. Okay. So, so it was I'd, easier for you. Yeah, it was easier. But so did your kids understand what you were going through? Um, or did you keep easy. it from them? I still have. No, I didn't. Uh, the last two. I have four kids. Mm. The last two, it was really, it has a big impact on them. Still. What kind of impact are we talking about? You know, about? They, they, they have this fear that okay. they might lose me. They're scared? Yeah. Are it's you scared yourself? Time. No, I'm not. You're not? I'm not. What all. keeps you going? I, I don't know. I think the kids. Okay. The kids keep me going. Yeah. yeah. Dorothy, do you sometimes fear that it could come back? Yes, of course. Okay. Of course, yes. Um, but then, yeah, I just make sure that I check myself on a regular basis, and everybody needs to do that. Exactly. You know, you don't forget that you've had this disease. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. it could turn up anywhere else in the body, mm -hmm. so you have to go and have yearly checkups. Yeah. Initially, after the surgery, it was every three months. Mm -hmm. You know, go and have my blood tests. Okay. And then mammograms every six months, and then it became every year. So right now, I do my mammograms every year on the other breast. Mm, yeah. Just and, to be sure. Yes, and all my um, all my blood tests. Yeah, What's regularly. Was difficult on your husband as well? Um, yes, it was. I think he, he, you know, I mean, he actually fainted when he, we were told at the time. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And, and, and I, I mean, after your breast was taking off, okay, well, you immediately got the reconstructive surgery. But then, of course, like you said, it's never oh, the it's same. Oh, still, it's still never the same. I mean, yeah. I stared in the mirror thinking, what the heck have they done to me? Yeah. You know, it's never the same. But um, yeah. it's very important to have family support, certainly. Yeah. I, I didn't have my kids then. So okay. So even then, they, they wanted to... You know, they considered freezing my eggs. Mm. But I decided to take my chances, and I was blessed. And you had kids after? Yes, yes, I have two wow. wonderful girls. Yes, you're brave. <laughs> I would have been scared. Yeah, I really. Be were you able to breastfeed them yes. after with the other breasts? Yes. Okay. But not for long. It was a lot of work with the one. Why was it a lot of work? Because it's I one. I mean, because of, <laughs> just because it's yeah. one. Not because maybe you're feeling oh, pain no, or no, anything. No, 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 no. But yeah, okay. it's, it's, it's it's tiring. Wow. Yes. Was your husband okay with the fact that you didn't have You know, fortunately for me, or unfortunately for me, my husband has a mouth stroke mm -hmm. and has dementia. Aww. So he does not figure out what is really happening. And it looks and like... And that was happening around the time you had the cancer? Yeah, yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, so for me, I think it's also another way that helped me to move forward. Okay. Yeah. Because you didn't really have afraid. time to... Yeah. This must be tough. Life after cancer, nine mm -hmm. years and 15 years, right. and you're here smiling That's and right. sharing your That's story. Right. I'm sure in the past it must have been difficult to even tell people that I was diagnosed with breast cancer. But here you are today, you run a foundation um, that educates people and sensitizes people on that. Why did you decide to set it up? Well, I um, I started. I moved to Ghana about eleven years ago. Okay, uh, I'm stuck at eleven. It's probably twelve years. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I started encountering lots of ladies with um, with the disease, and most of the cases I was seeing, mm. you know, it was very advanced. Um, stage four breast cancer. You yeah. Know, sometimes you see people with one breast much bigger than another, and you mm. wonder what took them so long to go see a physician. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so I started talking to them, and I realized that I wanted to do more. Okay. And so I, um, education is key. Yeah. Um, creating awareness as well. So we um, embarked on Dorothy's Hope Foundation for, in 2014. All right. And we strive to encourage women with the disease and empower mm -hmm. and also educate. Okay. Okay. So we go to the rural areas and urban areas and we do a lot of free breast screenings. Okay. Um, if somebody is diagnosed and they have been severally, if somebody is diagnosed and they can't, if affordability is a factor, we do our best to help them to through help the them. process. We recommend them to different hospitals and different okay. doctors, and we help them through the process. So for how many women have you, uh, under your foundation, discovered have breast cancer? Oh, quite a number. Okay. Um, more than 50. Wow. Mm -hmm. What about men, though? Because we, we all seem to focus only on the women, check your breast, screen your breast, go get a mammogram. But there's very little talk, yeah. um, you know, about the men and why they also should get breast cancer because the little reading I've done I've realized that if a man gets breast cancer he's even more likely to die yes. than a woman yes. so what about the men well men do get breast cancer as well and you know it's more devastating when they do simply because there's not much breast breast tissue there mm. so when they do get breast cancer it travels a lot further into the chest walls mm. and that can be more you know yeah. life threatening okay. so um, yes yeah, certainly you know, we don't leave men out of this the equation at all mm. I, I strongly recommend and I in fact part of my campaign is men I get men involved in all levels yeah teach men how to do breast exams so that they can help their ladies or they can also oh to help first, their ladies yes, first of but all they should also but they should also learn for themselves so it's the same right. procedure for it's men exactly as well the same procedure okay so they should be aware of it and just learn how to do it there's so much information out there okay there's a young man who says that he also had to go get a mammogram mm -hmm. um, you know to, to check for breast cancer and so because of that every year he's had to go because I, I'm not sure if they found something in there but mm -hmm. I think that was what he was trying to say mm -hmm. there was a lump mm -hmm. uh, you know but it was a benign lump so mm -hmm. it wasn't really something to be scared of but men also have to get a mammogram yes. every year just yes. like women yes mm -hmm. if they no 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 if they have signs of it if okay they, if they find a lump or anything you know, like that then they have to you know take it further and go have a mammogram and have it tested Hmm. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I think um, we have family history. Okay. Um, families should try to speak up to mm -hmm. help the family members mm -hmm. because I have a family history, my mother's side. Okay. And no one talked except one auntie. Mm. And she's died. I mean, she Aww. stayed with it for 20 years. And uh, I don't think that was actually the one that killed her. Mm. But um, once there's a family history, talk, and that should help others to check yeah and so even if it's your auntie it's very likely that it yeah. can still yeah. come to you if yeah. it's an and extended had she, and family had she exactly known, yeah she would have probably gone for a test, a test. earlier yeah. i started her mammograms earlier mm -hmm. right. most women are advised to start mammograms right. at the age of 40. Yeah. I, I i believe you should start a lot younger mm -hmm. okay yeah we should get a mammogram Especially, earlier as, oh yeah i mean mm -hmm. i i mean it happened to me at 29 so i i truly believe that you should have it done earlier in your 30s if possible, early hmm. 30s. But um, that's my opinion. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> um, but regardless, if you have a family history, then you need to be checked oh, earlier. Uh, yeah. But just make sure that at least every year you get a mammogram yes. um, or get screened as well. You are also sensitizing people on yes. breast cancer. Yes. How are you going about it? At the local level in my church, okay. every year, okay. I organize doctors from Kolebu and mm. nurses to do the screening. We do a health walk and um, the cases we get, I follow up with them back to the back hospital. Back to the hospital. Yeah. And I hope you continue to do so much more. I know Dorothy has a lot more that she's doing. <laughs> there was already a walk yes. uh, for breast cancer mm -hmm. on Saturday. Mm -hmm. We did that last Saturday. Last yes. Saturday. That's our annual October walkathon okay. that we have every year. In October, I tend to focus on Accra. This, okay. this region. Mm -hmm. um, throughout the course of the year, we do other regions. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we're 
what's left now is the northern region. Right. So we'll be doing that soon. You'll be going to the northern mm -hmm. region? Yes, to do okay. free screenings and mm -hmm. um, educational seminars and door-to-door, -door, whatever it takes. If we have to go into the marketplace, we go there and we drag them out. And, and how, how do you raise funds? Um, you know, to support women with breast cancer? Well, the, uh, for the first year at the time this year, f formally I was pretty much doing it by, by, by myself. Ooh. Yeah, but um, for the first time this year, we've reached out to, to a few corporate bodies and hoping that they come on board as well. Definitely. It's not easy. It's not. It's not easy, but it's, um, not. it's a good cause and there's a lot of people out there who need the assistance. Mm. Yeah. All right. I've been speaking to Dorothy Amwa. She's the CEO of Chic Optique and also founder of Dorothy's Hope Breast Cancer Foundation. And Beryl Liz Bannerman, she's an accountant at GRA, also underwent double mastectomy. Uh, but as you can see, they are fine. They are living a healthy life. And so can you. Early detection saves life. And so please, if you have to, go to the nearest hospital and check and be sure that you're fine. But if they find a lump or they find out that you have breast cancer, all hope is not lost. You can survive. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you the best. I'm definitely, you know, part of your team, so we're going to promote it as much as possible. But I pray that you stay alive, Amen. and I know nothing is going to happen. Amen. 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 Okay, so that's it for the health segment. We